excited to have you on though. So we're live. Okay. I hope I hope my internet holds out. If for some reason it freezes, just carry on. It records great. It's always me. Okay, but, awesome. Anyway. All right. well, thanks for inviting me here today. I'm just uh, really excited and really pleased as well to be able to let everybody else know what we're up to. Heck yeah. I'm so excited to have you on, Glenn. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into this? How did you get started? Uh, well, uh, probably a long time ago. I've always been involved in businesses uh, and personal things that you know benefit a lot of people, not just me, and benefit communities and benefit the environment. I've sort of previously been involved in, uh, well, environmental energy efficiency to do with air conditioning and water making from the air and gas turbines, and that was an energy efficiency system. Um, that was a few years ago. And then I uh, teamed up with a with a friend of mine who's a Dutch guy, and uh, he's a builder. He's been involved in the hemp industry for a number of years, and he used to do Hemp Creek Institute on site. And he's going, oh, there must be a better way than this because Hemp Creek Institute no offence to anybody that does hempcrete. It's fantastic. It's awesome. But, uh, you know, it does take time and uh, you need some special equipment and skills and so on and so forth. So he thought, oh, there must be a better way. So he started designing his own block and we're talking and blah, blah, blah. Then eventually he said, oh, look, this seems pretty good. Let's, uh, you know, develop a business. So we started our business in Australia about um, four years ago. And we did a lot of research and development um, into hemp, looking at, uh, not just the product itself and uh, what might be available. And we had designed our own block as well. Um, then uh, we were looking around for a manufacturing equipment uh, uh, at the same time. And it's like, you know, we stumbled across a few things and we thought, well, this is really interesting. These blocks are a bit of a game changer in my opinion. Um, so we actually came across uh, a French company uh, that built machinery to manufacture hemp blocks. And the guy goes, well, I know a company in France that already makes blocks. And it's like, okay. Well, so we flew up to Geneva and met this dude and he took us up to the to the, to the to our business partners as they are now. And we had a look around at their uh, factory and thought, wow, this is really impressive. It's so close to the block that we designed, but, you know, they're three, four years ahead. Um, so we had a good conversation. We said, wow, we'd really like to, uh, you know, take this on. So these two companies in France are very reputable, uh, very large. Uh, one is called Vieux Material, which is, uh, uh, they manufacture the blocks. Uh, they're in partnership with a, a large French company called Vika, which has been around for 150 years. Um, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They work internationally in construction. They actually make the binder for the hemp block. And uh, it's a natural cement um, so it doesn't take the same temperature to create that natural cement as it does with normal cement. So that's a bonus, and that's the binder that's actually used in the block. So, you know, hemp blocks are great. They're all natural. Hemp, herd, a lime binder or, or a natural cement binder and water, that's it. So, um, you know, the, the manufacturing facility has been going since uh, about 2017. And, uh, you know, we've uh, developed a, a business with them and, uh, you know, they've entrusted us to be their exclusive uh, distributors in the United States, New Zealand and Australia. So, you know, we're pretty uh, pretty privileged in that position. We have a close working relationship with them and, uh, you know, we've already built houses in Australia. Um, we've got... As I said earlier, before the interview, we've got a, ugh, you know, the United States is huge. We've just got a whole lot of people in it. I love viewed people in the United States. There's nothing as, as like, we can't do that. It's like, yeah, we can do. And me, I've got this can-do attitude, and same with the, my business partner, Johan. So, you know, like I said, you know, we're out there doing it. We've tested it. We worked it out. We looked at the compliance for building codes and so on and so forth. So, you know, my question is people go, well, why would you use hemp block? And they go, well, why wouldn't you, you know, with all these advantages and so on and so forth. So, you know, like I said, it's been a bit of a, a road so far, but we're only just getting started. Um, and, uh, you know, it's early days for the United States. Um, we believe the market's very favourable for these materials now. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people, as I said, doing hemp grid in situ. There's some other companies doing hemp blocks in Canada and uh, in Europe as well. Uh, we think the market's so big that uh, there'll be enough room for everybody. 
So at this stage, we're importing into the United States um, and we do intend to work with our partners to manufacture it locally eventually. And like I said before, me, I really love doing things that will benefit the environment and the community, wider community. So with the manufacturing I see is that, you know, we can buy raw materials from local farmers and then we can actually employ people. So we're adding value to local economies. And to me, that's really important because, like, the thing I love about this sort of stuff, everybody wins, even the person that is the client of the builder. I mean, they get a, a fantastic, healthy house. They reduce their energy bills over time and it keeps sucking in carbon in, uh, in, from the atmosphere over the 100-year-plus life cycle of the building anyway. So it's uh, it's pretty great stuff. And, you know, I might be a bit biased, but, uh, you know, I, I just sort of think, well, why would you build with anything else, you know? So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. So I don't know whether you want to see a couple of uh, shots of uh, what we're actually got here. I do. And for those of you that are just joining, um, you can please like, share, comment. Also, you can find the full interview at the end that will stay posted on both Patreon and YouTube. Um, so it, I'm excited to continue to connect. Uh, Glenn, real quick, before we get started, how do people connect yeah. with you? If people want to well, reach out and get to know you or you know, find, learn a little bit well, more. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, you know, we've got hempblockusa.com. Uh, okay. Uh, you can go there, you can contact us through there. We've got, uh, you know, you can contact us by phone. The phone number's there, toll free, American number. We can, we love to talk to people from America because you guys are so enthusiastic about everything. Uh, you, you can connect through LinkedIn, um, through me personally, or, or, or uh, we've also got Hemp Block uh, on the LinkedIn. Uh, there is a Hemp Block International on Facebook. Um, so yeah, that's probably the best way to connect with us. And, uh, you know, we're, we're quite happy to, um, work with anybody. And, uh, what we're doing at the moment is that people are going, oh, we want to manufacture in our country. And it's like, it's not the time just yet because this one quick side issue to me, I see in the United States is CBD. Everybody was into that and everyone's growing hemp for seed or cannabis for CBD. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I believe that market's a bit saturated now. Okay, there's opportunity commercially, but there's a big focus now in, on industrial hemp, so which is great for textiles and you know soil reconditioning and and, uh, and insulation. So what we thought was like, no, the market's not quite there for supply yet for raw materials. What we need, but it is starting to happen um, rather swiftly. We've been contacted from a, a lot of people in the United States that are actually growing hemp or have decodication uh, factories started. Um, and then the market's still in its infancy. So it's like when the raw material supply gets there and then the market's at a stage where you can commercially justify manufacturing in countries like, right, great, we'll push the button on that. And I would suspect that's going to happen sooner than later, probably within, well, before the next two years anyway. So because I know people are a bit focused on, well, you know, it's produced overseas, it's not the United States. And it's like, well, you've got to start somewhere. So... You know, we, we hopefully, with our partners, will be manufacturing in the United States, Australia, uh, New Zealand as well. And, uh, you know, there, there, there are a lot of opportunities out there. So anyway, that was just a bit of a side issue about the manufacturing sort of thing. So I'll just work out here. I can share my screen so we can show you a couple of pictures of what the uh, products look like. But um, there you go. Click the button. Well, I can see it down at the bottom. It's added, so I can add it in. Well, because I've got mine on a full screen at the moment with another with an image on. So, can you see that or not? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, so these are our um, you know, we sort of uh, have got a few operations that we're doing, but Hemp Rock International because we get a lot of all over the world, and so does um. VA material and Biosys is their actual brand for the um, Bloc de Chambre, as they call it in French, the um, Hemp Block. But we've rebranded that in English to Hemp Block uh, USA and Hemp Block Australia. Um, so VCAT, as I said, makes the natural cement. Biosys is the product, and then VA materials the manufacturer. And so I shall just get on to. 
So there we go. Can you see the picture with the hemp blocks? Yeah. Okay, so they're actually around, and I'll have to do this in millimetres because I can't remember what it is in inches because you guys are using a different system there. But basically um, they're 300 millimetres by 600 millimetres long and they're about 300 millimetres wide. So there's around about five and a half blocks per 10, <clears throat> 10 10.7 square feet. Um, so they're around about 18 kilos or about 39 pounds each. And they're dry stacked, <coughs> excuse me, interlocking hemp blocks. Um, so the benefit of that is that they, because they're dry stacked, there's no requirement for mortar between the joints and they go up very quickly. I'll show you a video later of, of how that happens. But um, that's the, the, we call that the LB300. It's our load bearing product. Now, while the block itself doesn't take a load, <clears throat> there's a load bearing system that's incorporated into the um, construction process, which I'll show, I'll show you uh, in a minute if I can work out where it is. Okay, so we've got different types of product here. That's the uh, standard block with the grooves, so it's interlocking. Um, this is a vertical column block, so there's actually steel and concrete that goes in the vertical columns, and then there's double columns, and then there's a lentil block that runs around the top of the building to tie it all together. And then we've got the starter block, um, which is uh, where this groove here fits into the starter block. So that's actually concrete, but the rest of it's just all blocks. So Basically, the system is using hemp blocks, which has a load-bearing construction incorporated into the um, building process. So I think in the United States, you called the, the um, concrete blocks cinder blocks. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so it's pretty much the same as a, a cinder block um, system. So here we have the example of how the um, system works. So we've got all the blocks here. There are windows, there's doors, or frames at least anyway. Then you've got the reinforcing still for the vertical uprights. Um, and then that's um, filled with concrete. So it's a pretty simple system. The blocks can be actually cut with a handsaw or a chainsaw. Um, so there's no problem with that. Um, also, if you want to um, chase in services like electricity, water, so on and so forth, just mark that on the inside of the wall um, and then um, you just uh, put in your uh, services and then you can actually use lime mortar, which we supply, to uh, fill in the gaps there as well. So once you've done the walls, you can render them with um, stucco or uh, render. And uh, we, we encourage lime, lime render, which we sell as well in a lot of colours, because if you actually put a concrete render on a hemp block wall, you're actually going to stop the air passing through the walls. And... One of the biggest advantages of using hemp block over concrete blocks and other building materials is that in the building envelope, you actually have air passing through the walls and that acts to control the uh, temperature and humidity and uh, really um, helps with indoor air quality and comfort. Um, so that's why you, you usually use the, the lime render, at least on the outside wall. You can use a, a board on the inside wall. So to give you an example of what I mean there is that Here's a little diagram of walling systems compared. So we've got the hemp blocks on the left. We've got the concrete blocks or CMU products in the blocks in the middle and then a timber frame. So this to me is just explaining that we've got essentially three layers of materials in a hemp block wall. And keep in mind that we're focused on comparing apples with apples. So these hemp block walls will give you a minimum insulation rating of around about R25. And... Uh, once you add the render, you in increase the insulation value as well. So you're getting that with the with the lime render, with the hemp blocks, and then you can do a drywall like plasterboard on the inside because that'll still give you a bit of breathability. So then you look at a concrete block wall. To get the same value of insulation, you have to have a rigid insulation foam board. And then so that adds an extra layer. And you go to a timber frame. And by the way, I'm not bagging anybody that builds with any other materials. I'm just using this to compare how this product uh, is with the others. So then a timber wall, you've got a, num a, a number of other layers with your cladding, sheathing, you've got your insulation bats and fiberglass insulation off gases and so does foam boards. So again, you know, 
I don't, the other thing I'm passionate about is I don't know any other building material where you're actually getting these sorts of levels of benefits in, in, in one material rather than having to use a whole host of other materials as well. So um, I shall just uh, also then give you an example of uh, the speed at which these blocks can be laid. And so I'll just play that. Do you get sound when I turn video on? We should. We should have sound if it'll play. Uh, okay. All right. Sorry. Oh, I didn't hear you there for a sec. I thought you'd disappeared. I'm, I've got a lawnmower, I think, outside my window, so I keep muting myself because oh, okay. I keep hearing it. Right. right. It's just mowing the other grass. Okay. Well, I'll just um, play this video. It's only a short one. This is just the speed of the blocks. So they're the concrete base blocks. Yeah, so that just gives you an example of how fast that is. So that's basically 10 or 11 square feet laid in six minutes. So if you're looking at, uh, now I'll just go back to you now uh, and stop sharing my screen. So, yeah, okay. So I'm back, back to you now. You're back. All right. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the thing, the other thing I love about it too is like, these walls are laid 70% faster than a concrete block wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that saves in costs as well. And, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that we've done cost comparisons with how does this product compare to traditional building? And, you know, we looked at what are the barriers and inhibitors to taking up hemp blocks in the mainstream or hemp creek for that matter anyway. Yeah. And you know a lot of the a lot of the barriers re relate to oh well you know builders they they've got this way of doing things they want to stick with that it's easier it's low risk you know there's this perception that it's really expensive to build with hemp and sure you do hemp creed in situ it's not for everybody because it's a niche market it's a, it's a it's a high end product and it's a fantastic product um so you know what what um, is happening with the, the 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 hemp blocks is that we're actually <coughs> excuse me saying okay well you know how much is it going to cost to build a hemp block wall well in the us we worked out that it's cost competitive with cinder blocks no problem but there's some more benefits not just about the quality like the insulation the water vapor barrier the you know sound absorption it uh, absorbs 43 decibels of sound so there's a lot of sound dampening in buildings as well fire resistant, termite resistant because it's highly alkaline um, and also it's mould resistant because you've got this breathability, the air is passing through the walls. Um, so, you know, it's just like, okay, it's faster and then you're going to have a lot of savings in your energy costs because it's going to cost you less to heat and cool the building uh, as well over time. And like I said before, everybody wins. A builder can construct a house with the walls in about four days. This is probably your average size American house. Everything's big in America. What is it? Two thousand two hundred square meters. Is that about square feet? Is that about your average size? Two thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know that's about uh, one thousand one hundred eighty-four, if I remember, a square feet of wall. So that's around about six hundred hemp blocks, and we estimate. And as I said, I've done this based on the people that we've spoken to in some research in the United States, but yeah. it's a real supply and install in America. It's around about $30 per square foot. Um, so that's much cheaper than timber frames. And I know in America, 90% of homes are built with timber, timber frames. And at the moment, you guys have got a problem with the supply of lumber. It's added $25,000 to a standard house at the moment. And it's not just in America, interestingly. 
there's lumber shortages just about everywhere. There's a bit in France. New Zealand, the guy was telling us the other day that you go into some hardware shops and there is no timber. Yeah. And the hardware shops are putting timber aside for their best customers. And same, similarly in Australia as well. But I have read reports that analysts are saying that lumber prices will settle back down to normal by the end of the year. Well, whether that's the case or not, I don't really know. But obviously it's a market like anything else, so supply and demand. So at the moment, we're highly competitive. Um, also, too, uh, you know, like I said, all those different attributes. We're getting a lot of people who want to build homes and they're saying to their builders, well, we've heard about this hemp rock. We want to know more about it. So there's a bit of market driven through um, clients. Um, also, you know, we've got the um, early adopters, architects, uh, builders saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we've heard about this and we've done our homework and we know that you guys are right in saying that it's cost competitive, blah, blah. Um, so what I was going to say, aside from the cost of lumber, there apparently is a skill shortage in America for qualified or skilled tradesmen, I believe, and I see Biden's uh, said he's going to improve immigration for people that want to move to America to help them build houses because I think you're going to have a 370, was it, no, 3.7 million shortage of housing this year. And... Again, that seems to be a problem in a lot of other countries too. But because you need less skills to build a hemp block wall, one builder, two labourers, that's enough to, to, to build walls. You don't need a, a block layer. You don't need a guy that has to mortar the joints either. Um, so we're solving a number of things, I guess. I mean, I'm a bit of an aspirant to uh, there's a, a, a theory called jobs to be done. And the theory is, what are you doing for your customer? What job are you doing for your customer? Well, we're doing a lot of different jobs with one product because it's not about us supplying or laying blocks. It's about us improving people's lives, healthy buildings, and improving the environment. Everybody at the in the supply chain wins at the end of the day, including the customer and the communities that we work in too. So, as I said, you know, I'm a bit of a fanatic about this stuff. And, uh, yeah, so the market's pretty favourable and, uh, you know, um, yeah, we're, we're sort of open to all sorts of things. We've got developers who want to do, oh, we've got a 600-block development here, so we just want to do it all out of hemp. Went, right, no worries, bring it on. Um, we've got other people who are looking at renovating, um, buying real estate in places that are run down in America, like, you know, where all your car manufacturing, Detroit and places like that where, Okay, would you go and live there? I don't know. I don't know those areas, but it sounds like a great idea to actually buy up real estate, buy dilapidated houses and redo them with hemp blocks, make them affordable. And, uh, you know, that's the other thing. It's like affordable housing is a big issue too. Yeah, so. Uh, you've, said, you've hit so many pieces I want to talk about, right? When we talk about uh -huh. efficiency of building a home, can you just put numbers up, like, this is, you know, we have a shortage of housing and we have not only an opportunity to be more sustainable and have it last longer. I look at our tribes, our tribes, some of our tribal homes in our in the United States. This would be extremely beneficial for. Well, yeah, we've actually had contact through a lot of the, the nations, sure. some in Canada, some in the United States. And it's just like, you know, it's similar in most countries where you've got indigenous populations, especially in Australia. I mean, there's been some terrible problems, but. Um, that's not to do with housing. That's mainly to do with uh, the way that the Australians over the history of, of uh, anyway, we won't go there. But basically, yeah, sure, I, I think this does solve a lot of problems as far as affordability. One of the things I was going to say, the speed of getting a house to lock up. Okay, all the walls are up in four days. Uh, the roof load for any builders out there, it's around about 100 kilos per square metre. And I think the floor load's about 370 kilos per square metre square meter so it does take a bit of a load um and builders to me it's like okay builder margins of what seven to eight percent or something like that it's not a, it's not huge so therefore then you have to run a fairly lean operation so if you can get a you know you get credit you work on credit to buy your land get your builders terms go to build a house and you've got x number of months to get it done so in australia an average quick build about six months i don't know how much it is in america but if you can actually get more houses on the ground faster and you can turn them over faster, well, fantastic. You've got a good business. And at the same time, 
instead of you having to pay an extra 25 grand for your lumber prices well you know i've made a few comments on some of the pages and everyone's complaining about lumber prices and i'm like well maybe it's time to start using hemp lots <laughs> so right. yeah. so so talk to me about what what have been the hurdles to bring it to mainstream as i talk to people and Sometimes I feel like I just feel I I, I mean, I'm always talking about hemp everywhere we go, sure. <laughs> and so yeah. um, talk to me if you know somebody doesn't understand and if it is so great, which I believe it is, why 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 aren't we at mainstream yet? What's our okay. so we get back to the barriers and inhibitors for, for 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 using hemp? There is a perception that green building products, not just hemp, are more expensive to buy and install. You need specialist equipment, or you don't, but I'm saying that's what people think. You need right. special equipment and special training. And also, too, it's like, well, there's a risk here. This is a, a new product. Well, not really. It's been used for millennia. I mean, there are, there's a bridge that's been built out of hemp in, I don't know, 1600s or something. But, you know, it's a material, a building material that's been used for quite some time. So mm -hmm. I really think it's the mindset of people as far as like i said we get a lot of calls saying oh yeah we think this is great we've done our homework fantastic and also now it's like there is enough out there to say okay this is a great material the thing about if we get into also oh it's not code compliant it's like okay fine so there's been 40 independent tests done on these blocks in europe that is done by the uh organizations that are, are fully independent and certified to just test building products and mm -hmm. um, they then are accredited by the committee Francais. i can't remember their name but they're part of the international group of accredited testing or accreditation bodies so my understanding is like in australia we've got one building code nationally and 548 local governments that are going to implement the building code mm -hmm. so i was like okay the test in europe European standards, because their uh, their accreditation body is a member of the international accreditation bodies, those tests are accepted in Australia and New Zealand and also the United States. But I understand in the United States you've got 50 different states with 50 different building codes and then God knows how many local governments you've got. So what we're finding is that, oh, yeah, can we have this piece, this piece of information? So we provide architectural design support and engineering support. Now, we can't that, we can't sign off an engin, engineering in, in America because I understand in America the engineer needs to be certified in that state or that locality. So we provide engineering support to the engineers to say, all right, well, this is not rocket science. You engineers work in, no offense to engineers either, but they work in boxes. Everything's got to be structural, blah, blah. So, you know, they need to look at the, the things like what's the soil reactivity? what's the wind loading, the design and all that sort of thing. So like I said before, what we're saying is that, hey, do you know how to build a cinder block home? Yeah, well, it's a no brainer, it's exactly the same. So the only difference probably is that with a cinder block home, you need to have reinforcing either side of openings like doors and windows and a lintel across the top, which is normal, but you may have your vertical columns a bit closer if the wind load is, say, like in Australia or down in Texas where you're getting hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff of winds of 200 kilometres an hour. So the columns are just a bit closer. So I'm not an engineer. I'm just simplifying this. But they're some of the things that we've been coming across as far as, okay, well, yeah, nobody's ringing us up going, no, we don't want to use it. It's like, okay, tell us more about it. So we've sent some samples out as well because people go, well, it's not a it's not a high compressive strength hemp blocks. No, well that's true. It's not like concrete, but because it's got a load bearing system, and people go, oh, the real purists are going. You guys are using concrete and steel. It's not going to be carbon negative. And it's like, yes, sure. There's going to be a little bit of um, uh, carbon positive, but overall, on a standard size house, you're still going to be negative ten tons of carbon. Plus, then. It'll sequester carbon continually because the blocks actually carbonize. They actually petrify over time. So the lime binder and the hemp start petrifying, and that's actually sucking in carbon from the atmosphere. I think it's six grams per kilogram of, of, of material or something like that. So, 
you know, it's just like, okay, yep, if you want to build a house just with hemp and timber, no problem. But we want to try and bring this to the masses in the mainstream. So to me, it's really important to sort of say, okay, yep, if you've got some concerns, no problems, we'll help you work through those and also make sure that it's actually going to be, you know, code compliant, obviously. And uh, so far, so good in Australia. And we have designed a few uh, houses in the United States that we're actually currently working with local engineers to make sure that, you know, they have to be comfortable with it. I mean, it's like everything. People's like, oh, I don't know about this stuff. I just want to stick with what I know. It's just easier. I was like, that's okay. But who's driving the market here? It's really not the builders. It's people in general. Who's driving the market for climate change? People are concerned about how they're living and, you know, we're all going to die because of the COVID and the water's going to rise and, you know, it's just a complete disaster where I'm a bit more of an optimist. It's like, well, you know, I sort of think that, yeah, it has to go this way. And, again, the thing I really love about it is that, wow, you know, here's something that grows. It doesn't really need pesticides. It takes a little bit of water to get going, but then it uses less water. Excuse me. There are people converting old factories into, you know, hemp fibre production facilities, which I think is great. So, you know, they're bringing in economy. They're, 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 they're working with the environment. They're employing people. And then they're, it's like, okay, well, you know, every hemp house you build, I mean, eventually we're going to put a counter on the website saying, okay, this is how many blocks have been installed and this is the amount of carbon that's actually been sequestered or saved from the atmosphere. Um, so I believe this is my forecast. It might take a little while, but I think hemp blocks will probably probably become as common as concrete blocks. You know? Yes. So because they're so simple and, and it's just like, well, you know, farmers are going to make pretty good money from, from their cropping because – it's not, they're not just selling the wood. I mean, we're using essentially the waste product. I mean, you know, with the CBD plants, they're not quite the right type of hemp herd that we want, but with the, 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 the industrial hemp, it's perfect. So, you know, uh, like I said, we, we're just in this phase where people are starting to realise that, okay, when you're in business, you've got to make money. It's great to feel good about things and be altruistic and stuff, but if you don't make money, you've got to feed yourself. And, uh, you know, you've got to be successful to help other people be successful. So, you know, I'm not making any bones about it. Yeah, we're here to make money. But at the same time, I think we've got a great mission. And, you know, I want to see hemp block houses everywhere. And it's like, yeah, there are other companies doing it too. And you don't need load-bearing hemp blocks. You can actually um, use the – we do uh, other products that are just insulated hemp blocks. Um, so you can – refurbish the outside of your house, uh, for example, and you can use the hemp blocks as insulation on the outside or you can do it on the inside too. So, you know, that's a pretty easy process. It's a little bit, um, you know, you need to, to use lime mortar for the jointing. It's not the same as the, as the uh, load-bearing type blocks. Um, but we've just done a house in Australia where we built underneath the house because there's a rental accommodation crisis in Australia. If uh, you haven't got a job, and you've got a couple of dogs, you need to move out into the desert because there's no way you're going to get a place to rent anywhere. So there's real issues. So people are starting to look at, oh, I'm going to put a, uh, you know, build underneath my house. And so the, the woman we've just done that for has been really happy about that and she's renting that out. Uh, so that's all insulation blocks. Uh, we've got another person who's actually putting uh, like a, a granny flat. I think in the, what do you call in America, ADUs or something? Uh, they're... Uh, various laws now, I think in Los Angeles, where you can actually build a small dwelling on your block of land, mm -hmm. and as long as it's less than X number of uh, feet, you don't have to get uh, you know too much planning permission for it. So, and also in the UK, apparently, because uh, they're talking to some people in the UK about doing some business over there, apparently you can build small cabins on your land, and it's called glamping. So you know, glamorous, glamorous camping. Yes. So, uh, you know, pe people are looking at all sorts of different uses and this lends itself to that anyway because you just need a concrete slab, off you go, boom. And, you know, you've got your walls up, put your little roof on and, and you've got a nice little Airbnb glamping thing to do as well. So, you know, that the, the, the thing is to me it's like, wow, there's people coming up with all sorts of different things. 
And you don't need a concrete slab. You could do a raised floor. You can build uh, hemp houses to around about two stories. Um, so obviously it needs to be engineered, but basically you can use the, the top floor. You can actually use hemp, the insulation uh, panels on the top floor and cover that with a, with, a, with, a, with a bit of concrete and you've got an insulated floor. You can use them as roof bats as well. Um, so, you know, we're, 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 we're keen, uh, we're working with people that are looking at the holistic approach, not just, okay, it's a hemp house, but, you know, we're looking at what type of roofing is being used, whether there's solar, whether there's water harvesting, um, you know, all sorts of things as well. So, you know, and, you know, building industry is booming in the United States and in Australia it's going crazy as well. I mean, you know, if you can find a block of land in Australia to buy, and if you want to buy a house or a block of land, it's just just amazing. I mean, everybody decided we don't want to live in the cities anymore. We're moving up to Queensland on the Sunshine Coast where there's sun and we can work from home on blah, blah, blah. And I think, you know, a lot of the culture is changing now. It's like I read an article today where people saying, oh, well, working from home failed. It's like, well, I don't know what happened there because I've been working from home for about the last five or six years and you have too, I imagine. So yeah. it just works really well. So, um, you know. Yeah, anyway, that was my bit of a rave about, you know, why, why builders aren't taking it on. But they're starting to because we're coming from a, okay, it's environmental, but, hey, this is good for your business. You guys can save money, save time, make more money and get more houses done. So, you know, why wouldn't you do it? It's like if you're a businessman and you want to make money, well, we're here to help you. And, you know, you'll be uh, attracting people that it's like, wow, I'm living in a house where, it's really healthy and comfortable and I'm saving money at the same time because let's face this, if you're in business and you're actually building a house, do you really care about who lives in it after you've sold it? I don't know. I'm just posing the question. I would. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Some people. Yeah, but, so I, I have a question for you. When we talk sure. about load bearing, right, we don't hear this a lot in hempcrete. There's a no. lot of hempcrete or hempcrete blocks, like you said, the insulated blocks that are not load bearing. Talk to me a little bit about what's unique or why this is so much more unique than what's average on the industry or out in the industry right now. Well, as far as I know, there's only two other products that are load-bearing, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't mind talking about our competition because I think there's enough business for everybody. Well, and, so, and let's talk about that too. Let's talk about the demand and the reality of where we're sitting and opportunity. I look at processing facilities and we need hundreds of processing facilities just to fulfill the demand of the yeah well that's true but you know to me it's like one of the other reasons we want local manufacturing is that we're reducing the carbon footprint again because we have got an environmental and health declaration mm -hmm. uh, here in france and that's a bit applicable to everywhere else as well because they're again based on international standards and they are accepted internationally but okay, we've got the shipping issue at the moment. It's not a big deal, but, you know, that's something we want to do. So getting back to the load-bearing aspect of it, you've got things like just biofiber in Canada. Um, I don't know if you've seen their blocks, but they look a bit like Lego. Um, and they look, they look really great. I mean, they've still got to be glued together and stuff like that, but they're actually more load-bearing than what we've got, but they're a bit more complicated as far as putting them together. So I'm not downgrading the product at all. It looks like a great product too. Um, you've got ISO Hemp in Belgium. Um, they provide a lot of uh, insulating type blocks and they do a load bearing system as well. But again, it's slightly different. You still have to uh, either glue or mortar the blocks together. Um, so we're saying our competitive advantage is that they're dry stacked. Off you go. So, okay. So anything that's with hemp, except for just biofiber, I, I don't think they've actually got a, a post and beam uh, system because, as I said before, with our blocks is okay, they're not load bearing by themselves, but when you use them with the, with the, um, with the structural component, uh, do you want me to put that up on the screen again so we can actually just see what I'm talking about? Yeah? Okay, well... Um, We'll just go back and see if I can do this again. Share. Back to here. And that's the system there. Okay. 
So, okay, there's your hemp blocks and all that sort of thing. So <clears throat> basically it's on a concrete slab. Can you see my mouse moving or you just see the image? I can see your mouse. Okay, great. Awesome. So there's the concrete slab. You've got the starter blocks and they're actually reinforcing bars that start in the concrete and go up and they join with your vertical columns. So as I said, we've got the hemp block products. They're, the one up here is actually a, a single post uh, vertical column. So it's got the hole in the block. So mm -hmm. the steel goes through there and then you fill that with concrete. And then these lentil blocks across the top are filled with steel, with uh, put in with steel. That steel's tied to the verticals, which is tied to the slab. And then the lentil course runs around the entire perimeter of the wall of the house. So this is, as I said before, it's exactly the same as a cinder block or a CMU product um, walls. So it's actually using the post and beam to actually support the structure. Um, so that's essentially ha how, we, how we have a load-bearing system. It's not a load-bearing block, but the block and the systems itself is load-bearing. Does that sure. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So that's where it differs. Like we said before, we have been involved in hempcrete in situ, mixing it on site, and I have been mm -hmm. involved. I actually worked with my business partner, Johan, on one building he did about I don't know, six or seven years ago. Fantastic building, but gee, it took a lot of time to mix everything on site. We had to have special equipment. Then we had to wait six to eight weeks for the blocks, for the hempcrete to dry, and then we applied the render after that. So it came up real nice. Mm -hmm. But okay, the advantage of that is that, you know, if you've got a post and beam situation with timber, well, okay, you know, you're, you're, you're probably more carbon negative than we are. As I said before, we're still getting 10 tonnes carbon negative, um, but, uh, you know, because we're using a little bit of concrete and steel, it's uh, it's not making carbon positive, but it's not as much as, that, say, a hemp creek, pure hemp creek wall. So, you know, like I said, there's a bit of a trade-off there as far as, uh, you know, building a house out of blocks. But again, what we've what we've we're excited about was like, wow, this solves a lot of problems about bringing this into the mainstream. So let's face it, I mean, how many mainstream building products are actually carbon negative? I have no idea. Not no, many. Right now, well, maybe, but I, I I don't know. And I think that's you know, there's a lot of conversation about carbon negative, the product being carbon negative, and then how it's manufactured. And the benefit well, of absolutely. along that entire supply chain is drastically different than manufacturing other products. And so... Yeah, well, um, we were actually looking at being listed on one of these um, programs. I won't say which country it's in. Anyway, I said, oh, yeah, well, we want to list this because the assessors and blah, blah. I said, oh, yeah, 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 you can just uh, say it's, it's hemp crete. And I went, oh. No, it's not just hempcrete. I mean, this is a, you know, the, the, the binder in a hemp block is the Colonel Sanders secret recipe. Everybody's got their different binder. And ours is, a, you know, prompt national event from a business partner, Vika. So I was just like, well, why would I, and I, and I said before, okay, there's enough business for everybody, but, I mean, we're busy doing other things. So it's like, okay, so it's just easier not to worry about it at the moment. We'll do it at a later date. But I must say, I've looked at your lead program and I'm pretty impressed with that. I mean, I think there's about three or four credit categories that the hemp block fits in really nicely with. And yeah. one of those is looking at the environmental product declaration and CO2. The other one's uh, indoor air comfort, indoor uh, comfort and air quality as well. Yeah. And uh, two other things, I can't remember what they were off the top of my head. So... I was just like, lead seems to be a big thing in the United States. And, you know, I think builders get tax credits if they get uh, a lead uh, certified building. So mm -hmm. that's another thing. It's adding value to your business as a builder. So we can help you improve your margins. We can help you have a point of difference with your customers. And also we can help you build houses faster and a little bit cheaper. Uh, at the same time, it's like, wow, you know, your business is just going through the roof so mind you like a lot of people at the moment don't have to worry about that too much anyway because business is booming for a lot of builders so you know the other question is if i was in a business that was going really well why would i want to actually change what i'm doing yes you know, so 
that's a personal choice as well. So I'm not going to say this is for everybody because there are considerations. It's like, well, if it ain't broken, why, you know, why, touch, why, why, why uh, muck around with it? So I sort of think that, you know, if I was in business, I mean, you have to be passionate about these things. And as I said, the general population is driving a lot of this change. It's just like, yeah, you're the government, but you're public servants and don't ever forget that. Serve the public. I know a lot of them do. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you. We talk about supply, right, and transportation. Um, mm -hmm. Transporting, you know, or importing in right now to the U.S. And when big builders say, okay, I'm ready, I'm having a hard time with finding labor. I know that's a huge concern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially qualified labor and being able to cut that back. And they say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to dive in. What does supply and demand look like? You know, where are we and how do we fulfill, how do we answer that for our big developers? Well, I mean, you know, if something like at the moment, we're on about a six to eight week turnaround time from when you order and pay because, you know, we don't do credit, doesn't work real well. But basically, uh, you know, we organise everything with a supplier, all the shipping's organised and everything. It's all run smoothly. We've done it plenty of times. So it's about six to eight weeks. Could be a little bit longer depending on, you know, various ports. But, I mean, at the moment, there's a slight little slowdown because there's a, a bit of a, since the Suez Canal block, yeah. and they, they managed to give it an enema, so it's fine. But uh, that slowed down shipping and uh, things like that. But anyway, yeah, six to eight weeks, but... See, when you're building a house, it's like, okay, there's the process of the design process in your engineering. It's like, okay, right, because we take people's plans and say, right, we'll give you an indication of how many blocks, how much materials required, and then we'll give them a quote on saying, okay, it's factory produced, tell us your address and we'll make sure it'll arrive on site, be delivered just like any other blocks, ready to be unpacked and off you go. So... You know, in a house, when you start ordering materials, that's within the realms of reasonableness anyway. Of course, we're not going to be selling the product through Home Depot or something like that. Um, so, And at the moment, we're saying, well, no, nah, minimum order, 600 blocks. So strangely enough, 600 LB300 blocks, the load-bearing system, is about spot on the number of blocks you need to build an average house, single unit. Uh, residential house so thought, well that works well plus all of the uh, render that you'd need um, or the stucco you'd need to do the walls as well so the other advantage I hadn't mentioned thinking about the render is that normally you do three coats you do a scratch coat because the blocks concrete blocks are smooth you have to do a splash coat then you do a skim uh, you know a skim coat then you do your final coat because the surface of the blocks is already rough there's no need for the splash coat it's just like, nah, render, first the uh, first coat, then you've actually got some uh, some mesh on the outside, mm -hmm. make it stronger, and then you do the final coat over that. So, you know, that comes in, you know, 27 different flavours or colours or whatever. And so, you know, there's an, a, another advantage as well. So as far as the supply and demand goes, well, you know, I've got a target that I know once we get to a certain level, well, then that'll push the button to say, right, we're going to go start manufacturing locally. And uh, the good thing is that this is not sort of any guesswork because we've got the Vika and Vie Material who have already been doing it. It's like, sure, anybody could go and set up a factory, but it's probably going to take you two, three, four, five years to iron out all the bugs and work out everything. So this is, uh, this is all ready to go. And like I said, we've got a relationship with the equipment manufacturer. And... Uh, you know, they've got a patent design as far as the, 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 the system goes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it can be implemented and uh, got up uh, fairly swiftly. So, uh, you know, like I said, there's no point. I'm not going to go and put my hand in my pocket or get investors to put their hands in their pockets uh, and, unless it's, like, commercially viable and justifiable. And that is going to happen fairly quickly. And I see that your president's actually looking at you know, kickstarting things for affordable housing in the United States, but then we have been in contact with private enterprises that are going to do it themselves anyway. Yeah. And it's like, great. You know, there's a there's a lot of great initiatives out there where the people are thinking outside the square and going, right, you know, what are, what can we do here because, you know, people are generally concerned about others and it's just like, great, 
you know, a lot of these places are ready for it and uh, there are people that are prepared to put their hands in their pockets and start doing things. And, yeah, sure, they'll make money out of it at the end of the day, but what if you can buy a house in the United States for less than $200,000? Yeah. You know, I, I think that's, to me, that that's seems to last. Oh, yeah, ex exactly. You know what I, mean? I mean, I think that's the big piece is, sure, we can build them and we can build them cheap, but they're not lasting, and that's the biggest problem. And the fires, I mean, I, I can't imagine the outreach that you've probably had from the fires. And the yeah, yeah, we've, we've had a few people from California saying, uh, look, you know, we've looked into these blocks and, they're, you know, we understand they're fire resistant and stuff, and it's like, yep. No problem. So same in Australia, because I mean, you know, you guys in California, yeah. in California, you got fires. We got we had big problems yeah. with fires. Um. So you know, that's uh, that's another thing. So you know, it's it's something that yeah, uh, those things are driving the market too. Um. And then you know, we, we've got we've just got a lot of people that are just going, wow, this is great. We want to really do this, and it's like, okay, fine. So I dare say, when you speak to me in another year's time. I might look about ten years older, but uh, <laughs> going to be a hell of, <laughs> going to be a hell of a ride. <laughs> I'll tell you the the introduction of what hemp is is I, I'm with you. Instead of asking, you know, why should we? It should be why shouldn't you? Like what what about it? Is it that we should not be using for especially for our building, you know, our building materials? I do have one more thing I want to go over real quick or ask you about is transportation. My understanding is previously, especially with um, like cinder blocks, we can't transport them through rail because they break. Um, but with these hemp blocks, are we now able to transport through rail and make it much more cost effective that way? Keep them off the well, road? I wasn't aware of that, but uh, basically I think, okay, we, sh we ship 40 foot high cube containers mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Marseille to um, to to uh, Brisbane, for example, you know, it's uh, you know, twelve thousand kilometres or something. So, right. I dare say that. Well, if you're in the ocean and it's a bit rough and all that sort of stuff, we've had containers that arrived intact and haven't popped off. But I believe there's about two and a half thousand containers a year that ends up in the ocean. But uh, yeah, no, mate, oh, that's a good point. Something I need to look into because I didn't realise that uh, that uh, you know concrete blocks crack when they're actually being um, Right. Transport. So, yeah, yeah, no, uh, good question. So, yes, yeah, so I don't know the answer to that. But as I said, all I can compare it with is shipping. I mean, you know, shipping uh, sometimes is pretty rough. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we fit about 20, well, I can't remember how many pallets in a container, but it's quite a few. Like I said, 600 blocks. And yeah. so far we haven't had any damage. See, and I think that's just one other benefit that we're, you know, we're looking at is the way that we can now transport and be efficient and cost effective still. Because we well, we have the thing, but the thing is, as I said before, if we take a look at Australia and just visualise this, Brisbane, it's a sort of mid Australia up north, and you go west about two, three hundred kilometres, and it gets into farmland and stuff. So in Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane, uh, Gold Coast, it's like you know, on your west coast of America, there's just a few hundred kilometres of basically urban area that's growing crazy. Yeah. So the idea is that you would put a factory between the demand centre for housing and the supply of your raw hemp material. You put that in the middle. So, you know, you, you're actually not having to use rail transport anyway. So it's like, why would you want to put a mega factory in one place, say in Oklahoma somewhere? and you got rail to everywhere, great. But for me, I really think that it's a bit more beneficial if you're actually looking at a number of smaller factories in between the demand centres and the growing centres and the supply of the raw materials. And as I said earlier, you're working with the local communities and going, well, okay, you know, this is fantastic. We, you know, we're adding value in not just financial terms but in social terms as well. Mm -hmm. um, not just for the people who are buying hemp houses, but people who are working, having a you know a purposeful life and things like that. Um, and then the farmers are actually doing stuff where they're actually going a crop that's sucking in carbon from the atmosphere and so on and so forth. So I don't know. To me, transport is not going to be a real issue. Uh, yeah. Only yeah. importing at the moment, but yeah. Uh, and and again, it's like like well, you know, we've got to live the philosophy. This is all about. 
well, not all about, but one of the major points is it's about reducing the amount of carbon, playing our role in reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. And, you know, if we're going to be transporting things all over the place, well, that sort of defeats the per uh, part of the purpose in a way. Yes, yes. Okay, so talk to me about, are you buying as a company, are you growing your own hemp and harvesting or are you buying your herd and shivs? What's the... No, no, uh, the, 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 the manufacturers are actually, they actually get their hemp supplied from 30 kilometres from the factory. Okay. Um, so, so that's locally produced in France here. I mean, the Europeans are a bit more ahead of the game as far as uh, hemp growing goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, their environmental product de declaration stacks up really nicely because the hemp supply is really close. So, no, that's a separate business. They buy from that supplier, and okay. also Vika, as I said, is part of the game. So they supply the prompt natural cement, which is the binder. They've got a huge quarry in Grenoble up near um, Switzerland there, up near the border, northeast of France here. So that's why it's worked out pretty well. So Vika owns the patent for the for the blocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, the Vie material, the partner, and then other manufacturers, and then Bios is, is the marketing arm of Vie material. And then, as I said, we've rebranded that as Hemp Block USA and Hemp Block Australia. And hemp block everywhere else. <laughs> so, what is the what is the acreage needed per for, per facility? Did you say thirty? Uh, like if, well, if building over here, well, the well US, you're talking about a manufacturing facility. You, you've you've frozen on me. Sorry, you're talking about a manufacturing facility or what? Yes, in regards to. Sorry, you froze on me, but I think it was really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah. How many acres do we need to fulfill a facility if we're you know, processing here in the U.S. or manufacturing blocks in the U.S.? A minimum, uh, a minimum, of, a minimum of around about a thousand acres. Okay. That's based on average yields and stuff like that. So in hectares, it's about four hundred something hectares. So that's at a minimum. So um you know but the production capacity can actually double that so also it depends on where you're growing so like in uh, queensland in australia or down in florida somewhere i imagine you can get two growing season per year so if you can do that well then okay you can do a thousand acres and you can run one manufacturing facility on that um so you know obviously in the u.s we probably need to work with our partners and look at the binder and stuff like that but you know, like I said, it, 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 that's not really an issue. The main thing is is, is the know-how of how to do it. I mean, that's been ironed out since I think they started in 2016 looking at it, 2017 in production. So they're improving things all the time. And it's great because we're working with them. And like today I spoke to um, Julien, the, the marketing guy, and I said, okay, I want to talk to you about this. Yep, yep, no problems, you know, if they're all – it's really great, and it's nice that I've been sort of stuck in France. I mean, apart from the red wine, great food, and now the weather's getting yeah. nice, <laughs> I've been able to sort of keep in contact with these guys. And once the lockdown's finished, hopefully in the 16th of May, I can actually go up and, and uh, you know, have lunch with them because all the restaurants and bars might be open because French culture's taken a real hit, you know. Nobody kisses yeah. each other or hugs each other anymore or shakes hands or fist pump or, you know, elbow. No restaurants, no bars, no cinema, no opera. Like, it's culturally devoid and it's like that's a big thing in France, you know. People have been really suffering. So the holidays are coming up in July and uh, if they, you know, just say they didn't have, if they decided that French holidays were cancelled, that would be it. That would be the next revolution, I would imagine. But anyway, good news is yeah, we were in close contact with our, with our, with our partners and, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're right behind us. And as I said, it's really great that we've developed this relationship and it's going to be a long-term one. And, uh, you know, they do supply blocks into Israel as well. Um, Israel's done quite a, a few hemp block houses too. It's a slightly different building system. Um, and, you know, we're, 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 as I said, we're looking at, places all, all around so you know we're exclusive into australia new zealand and the united states but working with our business partners uh you know we've been 
working with people in Fiji, Ireland, uh, UK. Um, we do get inquiries into Europe, but that's passed back to um, the French uh, connection here. And uh, yeah, so I mean, they're flat out busy at the moment trying to keep up with uh, the demand. But good news is their factory is quite a large production facility. So there's no problems about getting uh, product. And uh, as I said, we've got it streamlined now. All the bugs ironed out. So we send the order in, boom, it's on the boat in a couple of weeks and it arrives uh, in the country on site. So, you know, it's all real good. Well, I want my house built out of hemp blocks. I would love to build a home <laughs> and move this along. And I'd love to be manufacturing somewhere in Utah. Okay. So. Well, we've had a bit of inquiries that said, uh, you know, when I first spoke to you ages ago about, you know, Utah. There's a bit of stuff happening in Utah. I thought, what's going on with Utah? Utah. You contacted me, somebody else did, and then somebody else did. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Uh, so, there's lots that, of lots of building. I mean, our our housing shortage is the real thing. <laughs> well, you know, what we're encouraging everyone to do at the moment is like we get developers ringing up, you know, oh, yeah, we want a manufacturer. It's like, hey, first step is we'll help you with a house and all that sort of stuff. Let's get it on the ground because – Let's face it, people want to kick the tires. So, you know, you've got a builder who's like, oh, yeah, don't know about this hemp stuff. And it's like, you know, somebody puts in a display home somewhere or whatever, and it's just like people go, yeah, you're right. You've just got to get something on the ground. So, you know, the places we've got on, on the ground in Australia, talk about valuable advertising. Every single yeah. person that's come has went, right, great, I'll be back in touch. We've had people get back in touch in two days and go, right, I'm sold. I'm sending you my plans and things yep. like that. Well, that's like, exactly what I want to do. I want to build it so people can touch it and feel it and we can prove the, you know, I guess more show it, right? People people are hungry to see it and touch it. And well, it. well, that's right. So it's like, you know, there are the believers out there amongst us. There's plenty now. It's gathering mm -hmm. momentum. But, you know, we've sent samples off to the U.S. There was a Colorado Expo, you know, something, yeah. seven recently. A guy contacted us and he goes, I've got, I've got a little stand here. Do you want me to promote your product? I love it. And I said, yeah, sure. So we sent him over a block, air freighted it, and um, I sent him some marketing material and stuff like that. He got them printed and got the banners done and did a little bit of promo and said, "Look, oh, great, no problems. And I'm sent off another sample to an architect recently. So... I don't want to be inundated with people that want samples because it's a little bit exy. <laughs> but I yeah, not, I hear you. That's why we just need to build a house. Send them all to my house. Just come by. Yeah, no problems. Lucky we can talk off here. I, you can probably do. You know, we can negotiate and do a bit of a deal. No problems. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, the places where people are actually building things first, it's like okay, fine, we're going to do a good deal and give you all the support and everything. Mm -hmm. Make sure this is done right. And okay, it's pretty hard to. To stuff it up but you know we just want to make sure that it's done properly and everybody gets their value for money and you know gets the house that they want at the end of the day and yeah there are going to be some hurdles with various um you know states or counties about oh yeah we don't know about this product blah blah but you know we've already crossed that bridge in australia not a problem and i don't think it's going to be a problem in the united states either because uh, not in all areas probably some but you know they're they're there are people that's like, okay, this is not rocket science. This is easy. So it's like, you know, hemp's been around for a long time. And I think people don't understand because I didn't. I mean, I had to keep asking my business partner, because it does what? Really? Wow. And it's like, and I'm the sort of person that does a lot of research. I mean, I in my last business where I was doing um, waste heat air conditioning from gas turbines and then making water out of the air, so we're getting... 100 units of gas, and we were actually being efficient up to 90 units producing electricity, gas, water, and uh, air conditioning from one fuel source. And, uh, you know, those sorts of things. Again, oh, no, this is not possible. But I did all my research and I went, absolutely, it's possible. And, uh, you know, same with hemp. There's so much research and literature that's been done. I don't know if any other product's been as tested thoroughly as hemp you know, for, 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 for the construction side of things and probably for composite polymers and so on and so forth as well. But, man, there's so much information out there and somebody goes, oh, well, there's this thing. It's like, yeah, no worries. Here's this research paper or, you know, 
we're dealing with a lot of people where we sign non-disclosure agreements because of commercial inconfidence. But basically, you know, the tests here in France need to be done every two years. And European standards are pretty high. Australian standards and New Zealand standards are pretty high. I, can't, I think they're pretty high in America as well. So, you know, it's just like, yeah, everybody wants to make sure that you're not going to build a building and it's going to fall down. There, there are certain sizing zones that you can build hemp buildings in. There, there's certain ones you can't. So, again, it gets back to the to, to the engineer there as well. So, you know, I, I sort of think that um, America is a great market because we're highly competitive and that's really going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Australia is a bit, bit interesting because we pay people a lot of money to work, but we have to because... It's expensive to live there. And as a consequence, I mean, building per square foot over there or per square metre is actually a lot higher. So we're not as competitive in Australia. Um, but, you know, again, once we start manufacturing locally, well, that's going to make a big difference as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it makes it expensive because shipping to Australia is expensive. Shipping to America is not quite as bad because you're a little bit closer to, to here. So it works out pretty well. And as I said, I don't want to be shipping forever. In my planning, I've worked out. I know how many months we're going to be shipping um, containers, and then we'll cross that point. Right, let's get into the manufacturing. So you know, we've already I've already done all the planning on that, and know exactly what needs to be done and when, and so on and so forth. So you know, we got people who are doing deep codification factories, and they say, "Can you come and put a construction block uh, factory right next to us? We'll give you the land." It's like, yeah, no problem. But when the market's there. Absolutely. So, you know, of course, if there's anybody out there that wants to go and throw, throw money at it now and take the risk, because I'm a little bit risk adverse in that area, fine, contact me, no problems. But, uh, you know, we the other interesting thing, we have people going, where can we invest in your company? Are you on the share market? What? If you knew, if you, anyway. So I thought, well, it's, it's quite encouraging that, you know, people just ring you up out of the blue and just go... How do we get involved? You know, how can we give you money? Blah, blah. I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. So, you know, and uh, like I said, I think there's enough business for everybody. I mean, you guys approve what, almost a million building permits a year. It's just enormous. So, and you're still 300,000 short of mm -hmm. what the requirements are. So I sort of think one... I mean, we've sort of been flying under the radar a bit because, like, well, you know, we don't want to just push it real hard and then all of a sudden we're inundated and we can't supply the market. That would be the worst thing. Mm -hmm. So we're just sort of going slowly, getting some examples on the ground, um, and we are expediting things, but I haven't really pushed it into the mainstream. And so, you know, there's enough. I mean, it's quite amazing. We don't have to go chase anything. It's all coming to us, which is fantastic, a good position to be in. But... You know, my dream is that it's just going to become mainstream. I mean, that's what I did my uh, uh, master's thesis on is what does it take to, you know, as a market opportunity analysis on what's it going to take Kent Creek to become a mainstream building product. Okay. So, you know, I, I did a, quite a bit of research on that. I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And this is when I was just getting into business with my business partner. And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit of a sceptic here. Let's just see, you know, is, is this a goer or not? And I was yeah. like, yep. Yeah. I was convinced after that. And I thought, okay, yeah, press the button. Where do I sign up and how much of the company do I get? Okay, I'm on board. Let's go. <laughs> so it's been a good mix because I'm more business focused. He's more practical uh, building focused. And plus the other thing too is we're international because this Dutch speaks French and German and English, of course, but me. I speak French, but just enough to be dangerous uh, or to get by. <laughs> so, you know, we're, as a result of that, we, we've got access to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, equipment suppliers and other opportunities because we're not restricted by the language barrier, so to speak. So, you know, it's been, it's been quite good in that regard too. And it's quite amazing that, you know, everybody's uh, just so, wow, this is great. It's all moving. I mean... Almost anybody I talk to, they go, you're doing what? Are you, yeah. what, are you, what, can you smoke it? And I go, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I don't use all the blocks, can I smoke the rest of them? I went, yeah, but you get a real big headache apparently. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Could you video that? What's that? Well, Making a well, head block? 
Yeah, if they smoke the block. <laughs> could, you just, could you get that on video for us? <laughs> no, it's it's actually the new vaccine called Rasta 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 Zeneca. It's from Jamaica. Uh -huh. I reckon after the second dose, you just don't care about anything. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that the other day. Somewhere I thought, fantastic. I'm going to get the Rasta Zeneca. Rasta <laughs> That's anyway. awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today uh, or us. Thank you, everybody that's listening. Sure. Yeah, no, look, uh, I really appreciate you giving me your time. It's a fantastic opportunity to uh, be part of your Global Hemp Association Network. Yeah. And I think what you're doing is a fantastic job. And I'm just amazed at your uh, enthusiasm and, like, how many interviews have you done? Lots, huh? Yeah, a couple hundred. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, hats off to you. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, you're really driving the, the a lot of the process and, uh, you know, you're not just restricting yourself to this area or that. It's like a really wide focus. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and then, like I said, if anybody wants to get in contact with me, I'm on LinkedIn, we're uh, on Facebook and, uh, you know, or you can email us through the site or you can call us um, as well. So, um, you know, and we always get back to people and stuff like that. So, you know, any questions, more than happy to help uh, with designs, engineering, so on and so forth. So, yeah, thanks again. Fantastic. Awesome. Hey, I just shared your LinkedIn profile as well so people can connect there. But other than that, you guys, thank you very much. Don't forget, like, and share. You can find all of our content in both YouTube, our Spotify, Anchor, Google, um, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook. Wow. So. You're across the <laughs> Anyway, thank you, guys. We'll talk okay, to you later. Thanks. thanks.